What is the number one recommended form of recovery for runners? Brad Stahlberg interviewed 40 different athletes across a wide variety of different professions and he was asking them what types of things do you do to recover and they would give him a variety of answers from foam rolling to nutrition to a whole bunch of different things that they would utilize but the number one common theme that they all told him was getting enough sleep at night and so how well are we doing as a society? Well, it's not doing very, we're not doing very well. 65% of us are not getting the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep that is recommended for us to get. And what's even worse is that 40% of us are actually getting less than six hours. Now, this is a problem because back in 1942, the average sleeping time was 7.9 hours, whereas today we are now down at 6.8 hours. So why is this the case? Well, I think probably a combination of a couple of different factors, but two main ones that we're going to talk about today is our stressful daily lives and then also um, the amount of blue light we are receiving from the screens that we are looking at. So if sleep is important for us, what does it do for us? Well, sleep does a, a number of different things for us. For one, it will help us be able to retain and categorize information that we learn each day, which is why it's important if you're gonna study for a big test, you study and then you have a good night's sleep before you study again. We don't wanna pull in all nighters before tests. Second thing is that it helps us be able to process emotional behaviors a lot better. If I have things that are going on in my life that are emotionally demanding, sleeping well helps me be able to process those things a lot better. And then the thing that matters most to us as runners is that during sleep, we get a big boost in testosterone and human growth hormone. After the first REM cycle, we get those hormones into our system and it continues until we wake up. Those hormones help us be able to adapt to training and be able to um, be able to recover a lot quicker between training bouts. So now that we know what sleep does for us, how can we improve the quantity and the quality of our sleep? Because it's not just how much we sleep during the night, but also how well am I sleeping? Am I hitting the REM cycles when I need to? So here's a list that was given to us by um, Brad Stolberg and Steve Magnus from their book Peak Performance. And the list goes like this. You want to be able to expose yourself to natural sunlight every day. You want to make sure you're exercising daily. You want to make sure that you are limiting the amount of caffeine that you're intaking, especially phasing it out in the last five to six hours during the day. You want to uh, perform daily activities in places other than your bed. So if you need to study, don't go to your bed to study, go to a desk to study. Leave bed for sleeping. Don't drink alcohol right before you go to bed. As this, this may put you to sleep a little quicker, it actually has been shown that it reduces the quality of your sleep. Your REM cycles aren't as good whenever you're drinking alcohol. Limit the amount of blue light that you are receiving right before you go to bed. And this is things like smartphones and laptops. Although there are settings on newer smartphones that actually limit the amount of blue light they have. And if you have those settings, definitely utilize those before you go to bed, but preferably read books before you go to bed. Don't start working on stressful things after dinner. You've got things that you have to do for work. Try to get them done before dinner and then try to let things after dinner be normal, wind down things before you go to bed. If you struggle with a racing mind, it may not be a bad idea to practice some mindfulness and meditation practices before going to sleep. Uh, when you are drowsy, say for example, if it's eight o'clock and you start getting drowsy, go ahead and go to bed. Try not to fight it because sometimes you'll get that second wind and end up staying a little awake a little longer than you're supposed to. And then keep your room as dark as possible. If you've got um, lights outside of your house that are shining in, try to get some shades and things to prevent that light from coming in. If you have an alarm clock, try to set something up in front of that alarm clock so it limits how much light is getting to your face. I hope you guys enjoy some good, sound, quality sleep, and I hope you guys have a good day.